So draggable UI, you click, you drag, you drop, you constrain it to the boundaries so half of it isn't um, outside of your screen, and yeah. Alright, so let's make some draggable UI. So let's make the actual UI first. Okay, so we've got our UI. Now let's insert a local script into the frame and start scripting. I'm gonna call this local script drag since just cause we're dragging stuff. Okay, so we're gonna need the user input service. We're going to need the frame and we're gonna need to create a lead frame to kind of serve as a guinea pig frame. Uh, and I'll show you how we use this lead frame in the future, but we're just going to create one, so. Alright, now we need to reference the screen GUI, so let's get that. Alright, now we need two, um, two event connections. One is input changed and one is input ended, so let's get this. We're just gonna um, declare them. And now we're going to create a function called get bounds relations. And basically what this does is it'll take the lead frame and it'll see if that lead frame is out of bounds. And it'll return whether or not it's out of bounds and how far out of bounds from each side it is out of bounds if so. Alright, so we have this function. Now, just to reiterate, like, uh, we get the bounds of our screen, which is the screen GUI's absolute size. We take the top left and the bottom right, right here, and we check if those are out of the, out of the bounds area. We take the farthest top left and the farthest bottom right, and we check if those are out of bounds. If they are, then they, uh, how far out of bounds they are will be inserted into this, uh, dictionary. And re, um, if there's no, um, if there's no bounds in this dictionary, then you know that it's actually in bounds. So you just check if this dictionary is empty here. And then if it is, then we uh, also return the, um, table. That's basically what this function does in a nutshell. So now for our connections, we're going to have the input began, input change, and input ended. So for input began, we're just gonna initialize it right now and then I'll explain what to do after. So in the input begin, we're going to check if the user input type was uh, our mouse button. So once we uh, click the frame and our drag starts, we're gonna need to keep track of our last mouse position and our goal position. So we're gonna make some variables for those. Okay, now we're going to connect our input change variable to the input change connection of the user input service. And basically what this function does is it'll check if the if we were moving our mouse. And if we did, then it'll start getting the mouse delta and adding that offset to the goal position variable right here. So from there you can see like, okay, we're gonna move our frame to the offset. Once we move our lead frame to that offset, we're going to check if that lead frame is in bounds using our get bounds relations function. And if it is, then we'll just set our actual frame to the lead frame's position. And if not, we're going to get how far away the lead frame is from the bounds from the bound relations table will be returned and we're going to create a new offset 
and offset the goal position once again. So here is our input change function. So like I said, we're going to get the mouse delta from the uh, our current mouse position minus our last mouse position. And then we're going to uh, move our goal position by that mouse delta right here. And then we're going to set our lead frames position to that raw position. Check if it's in bounds with our get bounds relations function. And if it isn't in bounds, then we'll move it again move our goal position again to the correct position to where it's in bounds. And then we'll set our actual frames position to that new goal position and our, and then we're gonna update our last mouse position so that the Delta is accurate for every time input change fires. So that is our input change function. Now for our input ending function, all we're gonna do is check if we released the left mouse button and disconnect our functions. So now we have our input ended right here. Like I said, we are just checking if we release the mouse button and then disconnect our events. Now, lastly, we're going to need one last event for when our object is destroyed. And we're only gonna connect this once. So what this does, it'll basically just destroy the lead frame we created and um, disconnect the events if they are connected. So that is our destroying function. We're gonna change this actually from connect to once. So it only runs once. And yeah, like I said, we didn't have to uh, connect this to a variable because once the frame is destroyed, it'll automatically disconnect this. So that is fine. But yeah, um, let's test this out. So I'll hit play. All right, so hold, drag, okay, it's dragging. Now if I go out of bounds, you can see that the frame is being bound to our screen, which is nice. Um, you'll see at the top, it actually doesn't go all the way to the top. That's because ignore GUI inset is turned, um, is turned off. So it's respecting the top bar up here but you can easily change this for your UI if you um, go to your starter G or your screen GUI and you turn that to on. Now you can actually go all the way up to the top if you want to. So that is how you make um, draggable frames. I'm probably going to make a module script of this sometime in the future. Just be on the lookout in the comment section if I pin something in the comments or something like that or in the description. Um, it'll probably be the module script for this so you can use it for multiple multiple frames so yeah that's how you make uh, draggable ui um, this isn't for mobile mobile there's a lot more you have to do with dragging and whatnot um, but yeah this is how you do it for a pc um, yeah let me know what you guys thought of this in the comments and uh hope you guys enjoy peace